Welcome to this episode of Now That's Something Good, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary in the everyday ordinary. Now here's your host, Sarah Good. Hey friends, welcome back. Today we have a really special, fun conversation, something a little unique. So we have been traveling. We are actually recording this episode in Lynchburg, Virginia. Our oldest daughter, Lillian, we've been taking her on college visits, which is just a crazy place of life to be. But while we were here, God intersected our path with a really cool family. And so we decided to open up our Airbnb, invite them to come and share a little bit of their story. So today you're going to hear from our brand new friends, Kimmy. She's going to share most of the story. She's a 17 year old girl that God has just been using in some amazing ways. And then you're also going to hear her mom, Rachel and her sister Kennedy chime in as well. As we often remind you, we are not in our normal studio. So the audio sounds a little bit different. So bear with us on that. But I think you're going to really love what you hear as we get to dive in and they just share some really encouraging parts of what God has been doing in their life. And they definitely share some good things with us today. So here we go. Here's my conversation with three of the Naro ladies. Hey friends, today we are on location. I told you you're going to hear this, but I've got in our makeshift studio, our brand new friend, Kimmy. You want to say hello? Hello everyone. I'm Kimmy. <laughs> Kimmy. So I feel like we got to jump right in. You just got it. How did we get connected? Like, how do we, how are you sitting here today in our little Airbnb? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, um, there has been a lot of, uh, just connections, crazy connections. Yes. Uh, and like Will had said earlier, they're not coincidences, nope. but it's God's incident. Yep. Right. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we just uh, casually bumped into each other. I know, um, at the Liberty university college visit, um, um, we had just met there and I know that Lily, she had mentioned her, her worship major yeah. and, and that caught my eye automatically. I was like, Whoa, like I'm going into worship too. I was like, that's super cool. Love it. So maybe I'll talk to her later. And, and we ended up just bumping into each other. I don't know how many times yeah. <laughs> about maybe four times. Just, yes. wow. Like it was just such a God thing that, and an answer to prayers for yeah. sure. I love it. Well, and then we just awkwardly had a bold moment where we exchanged numbers with your mom and it was like, (laughs) hey, so we have a podcast. (laughs) Super awkward. We know you don't really know us, but do you want to come hang out? And so here we are. Here we are, yes. So Kimmy, I'm excited. So let's start like, you know what? Actually, let's go way back. So if you don't mind, how Kimmy, how old are you? I am 17 years old. 17. I love this because I think (laughs) I love when we get to bring younger people on and just hear what God's doing in your life. So back up and just give us a little bit of the 17-year Kimmy (laughs) life history a little bit. Where are you from? How's school been? All that stuff. Well, <laughs> I am from South Texas, um, a city called Edinburgh, um, very at the tip of tip, the tip of the tip, tip of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, and so I have gone through a lot, um, and God has put me through so many seasons of my life yeah. to bring me where I am right now. Um, starting with school, I mean, I am a huge fan. I love singing. I love worshiping the Lord. Um, and I love acting. I love musical theater. So um, I had started acting when I was um, in kindergarten, uh, when I was five. So, or four. (laughs) I don't know how old are you when you're in kinder. Yeah, I love it. (laughs) Four or five, somewhere in there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So I started acting then, and I pursued that all my life. I kind of made that just my priority. Um, Until seventh grade, my youth pastor, he had uh, reached out to me and a few other uh, musical, musically inclined (laughs) students. Yeah. And he was like, hey, y'all, like, do y'all want to start a worship team and blah, blah, blah. So we started a worship team then. um, And since then, I kind of made worship and just uh, church and and my relationship with Christ priority over theater. Hmm. Um, But it wasn't until high school where I really, where that was really um, adamant. I was really adamant about God and my relationship with him. Um, in high school, I did run it, run into a couple of problems, um, okay. being a Christ follower. Mm. Um, this past year before or two years ago, wow, COVID has, man, we've skipped it's so much. Every, COVID brain, you just lost a year in there, mm-hmm. it feels like. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so back my, uh, sophomore year, I moved, well, my freshman year and going into high school, I moved completely new districts Okay, just for the theater program. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, 
I moved to districts just for the theater program and um, just to pursue that. So I was really uh, happy and I with my where God had moved me. Yeah. And um, then I our schedule was crazy. We did nine to nine practices after school. Those were on the weekends. And then after school, it was like five to nine practices, just crazy hours, which I loved those hours. It was (laughs) so much fun. Uh. And um, so then. Um, later, as God called me closer to worship, mm-hmm. I started putting that first. So Wednesday nights, I couldn't go to theater practice or okay. you know, Saturday nights, I couldn't go because I had to be up Sunday yeah. morning at 8 or 7 a.m. Uh, yep. So um, I I would tell them, hey, like I can't make these these practices. Like, you know, I'd give them yeah. like, time and event of advance and they would say stuff like, well, isn't your God everywhere? Hmm. Can't you just get on your knees and pray from here? Can't he hear you from here? Hmm. And those are quote unquote words what yeah. they told me, the directors. Wow. So from adults, that's what I've I've just kind of take that and I was like, whoa, like, yeah, this is not where it's I would really want to be. And and it's really hard because theater, I loved it all of my life. I yeah. put it as a priority. Um, and then until then, and then COVID hit. So it was kind of just like a way to, for me to squirm out of that theater program. So okay. I still love acting and musical theater so much. It's just that theater program was just, I guess, just wasn't, Yeah, um, it wasn't for me, I guess, as as I had learned maybe two years later. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Kimmy, let me back up. So we actually have a little studio audience in here today. So tell me about who's with you right now (laughs) in the room and then tell me about the rest of your family. (laughs) Okay. So my beautiful mom, (laughs) her name's Rachel. (laughs) And then my Awesome sisters, like my, my BFF, uh, Kennedy. And then at home, they came with me to Virginia to the college visit. Yep. And then uh, my dad is at home and my brother, he's okay. the oldest. So and we just established you're the baby of the family, mm-hmm. right? Okay, yes, so you're the I'm youngest. The <laughs> Come in and I'm sure we'll have a lot of questions about that. We're <laughs> yes. already laughing because we met Kimmy and their family, as Kimmy shared earlier. And it's like her and Lillian just have a lot of similarities. And we're just like, it's super cool how God connected. So there's extra sure. laughter, especially <laughs> as you're talking about theater, because Lillian is a big theater <laughs> theater kid. And so we're just discovering more and more things as we go. Okay, so I feel like I got to ask a couple theater questions. Mm-hmm. So, like, what was your very first show? Do you remember, like, what's the very first show you were in? Okay, so I have you ever heard of Destination Imagination? No. Okay. Not. So, <laughs> so DI, we go by okay. DI. Um, it's just, I guess, like a, well, we do it the Rio Grande Valley. So it's a bunch of schools in, in the valley. They okay. come together and it's a competition. <clears throat> Mom, do you kind of want, you've been a coach. Do you want to kind of want to Yeah, we, explain? we're passing a third mic around here so we can share. <laughs> Hi, so I'm Kimmy's mom, and um, <laughs> Destination Imagination used to be Odyssey of the Mind. Okay. okay. So, and they, uh, so once it became, I guess maybe 20 years ago, it became Destination Imagination. That's amazing. So, um, Kimberly, since kinder at, at our campus school, we uh, had them uh, compete in, the, in it. Okay. And so that's where her acting came in and... We like lived DI. That's <laughs> wow. all we did, you mm-hmm. know. So, like, yes. Yeah. So, so it's a competition, and it's also it's it's statewide. Once you make it to the state level, then it's it national. Global. Yeah, global. Wow. And okay. It, Nationwide it, and then globals, as in like we go where was it? It's it's in Tennessee. It was in Tennessee, but yes. people from all over the world came. Yes. All. That's amazing. Okay. So right. Is that how you've done? I have um, social media stock to you just a little bit in this afternoon. <laughs> I'm trying to find a few yes. things. It looks like you guys travel a lot. Is yeah. partly some of the traveling due to theater stuff or just in general? No, that's just family. Okay. Family. Yes. But, okay. But uh, her theater pretty much came from there. And then her background from yeah. us at school. Then at the, the local university, she started acting in seventh grade. Fourth. Or no, fourth grade. Yeah, it was fourth grade mm-hmm. through seventh grade or through eighth grade. I at UTRGV, we they had a theater TYA theater for young audiences. Nice. So there were like children's shows, but all the college students were in, and the professor was a uh, the DI. I mean DI coach the, was the theater professor that was like teaching right. us for the show. Yes, that's amazing. And it was just a suit, uh, a great, great, great experience doing yes. that for a couple of years. Okay, so you have the theater 
competitions is a new thing. I've never really heard about that. So like when you're competing, like what would, what does that mean? Like, what would you be doing? Com- like the whole theater group, you individually, yes. like monologues or. So it's, it's a, a, an entire, it's a group of a seven, team, a, a team of seven. seven. Okay. So there's two parts to it. From each school. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's a. Like build your own. You have to like build your own props, build your own backdrop. You build your own script. Everything is from scratch. So they like encourage you to use like recycled items. So wow, like we made. There was this one year that we made like a book, and it was just out of like those cardboard boxes Mm -hmm. that a TV comes in, and we just made layers of it, and it was. Oh, and we, I mean, yeah, we would use the, the PVC pipes and use like shower curtains, everything from scratch. So we would okay. paint on that and everything. So it was, it's a pretty unique, like, it makes the kids think and like use their brain to like, okay, like, yeah. why don't we use this? Why don't we use that? So Kennedy, were you a part of that? It's not, I mean, like, were you in it too? <laughs> oh yes, I was. I did it, I think only for three years. I didn't do it. I didn't continue like her okay. <laughs> with my cup of tea, but I was, I was, I would help like with her practices and help build things with them. So that that's amazing. So that's Kennedy's voice that you're oh, yes. hearing. Hi. She's the big sister of Kimmy, who we're adopting to be the big sister of everybody right now. So it's her. Their, their family has just become family to us. So they're a part of the something good family, and we're keeping them. But that's amazing. Okay, so Kimmy, in middle school and high school, part of your school, did you do like, is it musical theater, just theater, all of the above? So um, it was more towards high school where we yeah. did, because our children's shows were more musical theater, like okay. Frozen and stuff yep. like that. So I, I actually played Baby Anna. I did you? Uh-huh. <laughs> really? Shut up. Oh, my I'm God. I'm telling you, it's like mirror, mirror lives right now. <laughs> That's I so awesome. It. I love it. So what was your other, do you have another favorite role that just is one of your favorites that you love getting to do and be? Probably um, at UTRGV, I think, what year was it when we did Sylvester and the Magic Pebble? I don't know if you've heard of it. I've never heard of that, but okay, I'm about to look it's it like up. A, well, it's a book. So what they would do, they wouldn't really do like maybe like Broadway shows, but they would do they would yeah. kind of get something out of books. That's cool. So yeah. yeah, so they did Sylvester and the Magic Pebble, and I was actually Sylvester. Well, they made it a girl because it was originally <laughs> right, a boy character. Right. <laughs> Sylvie um, or something. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was just such an awesome experience, especially like um, just having that experience with the college level. Yeah. It, it was really, really cool going at those hours. I loved it so much, and it was just a great experience overall. That's really neat. Okay, so fast forward. Did you, when did you graduate high school? Did you graduate? I'm a senior right now. Actually. Okay, so you're graduate. Okay, I knew you were. Okay, so you graduated early. Or, well, I'm or graduated. graduate in December. Okay, uh-huh. <laughs> congratulations. That's amazing. So you mentioned COVID. How has that changed just the last? I mean, are you back to school in person, virtual? Did you change it up? What? Well, um, I actually am in person now. This, okay. this starting. Uh, just starting in August or September, we started yeah. in person, but this whole, maybe for a year and a half, we were online, Wow, which was really tough. Yeah. I, I'm not a huge fan. I could, I adapted, but it was just not great. Not I that don't know. much very technical or technologically. Yeah. Fair inclined. enough. Fair enough. Yep. Yep. She's the, the I, like I said earlier, she, Kennedy's the brain of the family. <laughs> Kennedy, Kennedy's the brain. Hey, you know what? We all have our strong suits. We all have gifts. It's great. We all need each other. That's amazing. So Kimmy, so then theater, has it been on pause for you? Have you gotten to do any theater lately? Um, actually I have not. Um, so I, I recently, my last play was probably in right before COVID happened in okay. December. Okay. So, wow. yeah, which is crazy. Cause I mean, I just putting a pause on it, like that, like, like sudden, like yeah. I have done it for so long and then just stopping all of a sudden. But I feel cause right when COVID happened and I just got more involved with church, um, since church, um, they stopped having people come in person and we did those, mm-hmm. you know, everyone knows we did those yeah. uh, online the services. Online services. So, yeah. <laughs> so what we did was, um, it was the worship pastor and then I was there and then the pastor. Okay. And then my brother and sister are actually tech savvy. Awesome. So they would go to shout do, out to the tech crew. Exactly. Of worship stuff. We need all of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, they worked behind the scenes. So it was just us that, and since we were already a family, you know, sharing the same germs, you know, it was, yeah. So it was just us that we were going to the church during COVID and like pretty much handling those online services. So yeah, after quitting or not really quitting, but not doing theater anymore, um, God just opened a new door for me just to 
focus on worship. Yeah. Um, as I kind of uh, was leading uh, two groups. That's so amazing. I was leading one group and then recently now I'm leading two. So Okay. Well, thank you guys for doing online church. I know that that is, everybody had to jump into that world. Um, you know, I told you guys we're in church world. It was not easy because literally mm-hmm. overnight you kind of had to figure out how to do that. But for the people being able to still be a part of church, I know that's a huge blessing mm-hmm. and feel like you could still be community even when you couldn't really be in the same spot. So that's amazing. <laughs> well, Kimmy, let's talk about some of this worship stuff. We've said, I've told you like, our whole family is big family of worshipers. I've been a worship leader. Lily wants to be a worship leader. We love it. So I promise everybody listening, we won't geek out too far on, on all the worship stuff. No but, promises. Yeah. But I mean, we'll it might go a little deep. <laughs> we'll try. Uh, well, let's just start here. I'm going to start with a really, and it's going to be a hard question and it always is. So I don't know I'm asking it, but if you had to pick like just one or two favorite worship songs, what, what would be your favorite? Or I say, what would be your all time favorites? And then what what are you currently listening to? What's something that you're really liking? Okay, so one that I'm currently listening to is... Uh, well, there's two that I'm currently okay, listening to. Okay, that's fine. You can have... Uh, well, one is Gratitude by Brandon Lake. I don't I'm know just, if I've heard that one. I was saying I Brandon actually Lake just, is. Is it new, a new one? Well, Brandon Lake, I think he's a part of Elevation. Is he? Yeah, I think he jumped out. He used... He's kind of all over the place. Yeah, he is all over the place. <laughs> yeah. But he's a great musician, great worship uh, leader. But yeah. Um, yeah, Gratitude is one of the songs that I actually just like found it this past week. And then I, before okay. we came, I, I picked it up on the guitar and I was like, it's just such a great song. It's Pretty like nice. kind of full. I love, I'm a weird like music person. I love hey. minor keys. Yeah. You know what? There is a time and place <laughs> for those for sure. Okay. <laughs> so Gratitude is minor. Kind of okay, like it minor. has some harmonies that can go into yeah. like minor, can be a little vibe. Yep, yeah, love it. Okay, so there's that one, and then there's by Ann Wilson, My Jesus is a good uh, one. The My Jesus, I love that one. It's got that cool little country, country vibe to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a little twang yeah. to yeah. it. My, yeah. I can, I can get down for that. That's a good yeah. one, yeah. Kimmy. I feel like we're gonna have to hear you sing that song at some point. Like, that would be that's funny because some people at my church, I know my the youth pastor and then our executive pet, wait, no, not our, our senior pastor. Pastor. Yeah. Um, he, they have told me, you have kind of a country twang. It's so weird. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and it's hey, unique. That's what they say. So. That's, that's great. Well, let's talk about the singing thing. Let me back. So you've been in theater, musical stuff. Have you been singing your whole entire life? Pretty well, much? <laughs> pretty much. So um, actually, when I was a baby, my grandma, who passed away the same year that I was born, oh. um, she... She raised me just for a couple of months that I was that I was born I was alive, and so she um, she had told me that I tried humming when I was a baby. Really? Okay. Super rich. Yeah, yeah. She said that I would try humming and try singing and try like trying to say words right. Mm. This was before six months. This, this was before six months because my mom passed away when she was six months. Mm. Okay. But I would get home from work and she'd be like, "You should hear what she was trying to do." Wow. Yeah. You know, so wow. my grandpa um, is, uh, he, well, what, what, what did he do? If you want to say? My dad's musically inclined. My okay. entire family is musically inclined. Except wow. my mom. Except me. <laughs> it's, it skipped you, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> it skipped me. So um, when my dad was, she was with my dad a lot because okay. my mom passed. Yeah. And she, she actually um, helped all of us get through. Wow. You know, she would just be able to help singing. Uh, and mm. like, yeah, we lost my grandma, but then like we had her to like get yeah. us through everything. Aww. That's <laughs> that's really special. That's that's really cool, Kimmy. Um, so singing. Well, I want to come back to the joy part in a minute because mm-hmm. I feel like it took me about two seconds of hanging out with you to realize yeah. you definitely have the joy of the Lord. But <laughs> so you've been humming and singing yes. this whole time. So tell us. I mean, you said church, gotten to be in the church world, singing, worship. What is it about worship that like why you love it so much and why you kind of want to give your life to being a worship leader, right? Uh huh. Well, um, wh- when was my first special mom when I sang in front? Of she was three. I was three when I sang, you know, Jesus loves me. Yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> that yeah. was all yeah. I sang. I love it. And so, um, uh, surrender the one. What's the song? The surrender one. You were like in third grade, I think. The one that Kaylee recorded you. My Redeemer. Lives. My Redeemer lives. Oh. Yeah, Redeemer. Okay. Nicole, Nicole C. Mullen. Mullen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I just think that um, worship has a special place in my heart just because it's not just like, 
any lyrics to a song or not just yeah. any words, but it's like totally the truth. Yep. And most of the time, I mean, that those lyrics come from the Bible. Mm-hmm. And so it just, the words that come along with the melodies are just so heavenly. And so they're, they're worthy of singing yeah. to God. And that's, that's the point of worship. I think that leading people to the throne of worship is just, you're having like that conversation with melodies to God or for God. And I just think that that's what worship is all about. And just having, um, a music, any musical talent. I just think that it's so awesome that people use it for God and, and use their talents for God. So, yeah, we talk about all over scripture, right? You see, I mean, there's a lot of ways we can worship and we could probably spend a lot of time talking about worship (laughs) and semantics and all that. (laughs) And there's a lot of ways that comes out, but clearly over and over in scripture, you can see that one of God's favorite ways to be worshiped is through instrument and Mm -hmm. music and melody. And it's amazing how Mm -hmm. that connects us. And we often talk about like worship, it's, it's our theology to music. And so as we're singing these songs, it's telling us about the character of who God is. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. And we need to hear ourselves say those things over and over again. Okay, so come back. You told us a couple of your favorite gratitude, Brandon Lake, my Jesus, and Wilson, right? Wilson's your last name? Always. Yeah, um, Wilson. <laughs> and then what's like, what just give us a few other of Kimmy's favorite worship songs. If people are listening and they're having a day and they need to put on some worship music, what would you tell them to listen to? Um, the, the blood. Called, oh, oh yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Yes. Um, okay. And then one that has totally spoken to me. And honestly, I, I gave my testimony at church a couple of months ago and one song that I sang along with it that just totally reflects off of it really well is um, Called Me Higher okay. by All Sons and Daughters, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's a Got really good music. Yeah. So I love All Sons and Daughters, Lauren Daigle. A lot of people, I guess when it was usually- Not so much was, anymore. Yeah, but, not anymore. But yeah. usually, like, I guess when my voice was maturing and like yeah. when I was growing up singing- because I guess the church, like, they saw me grow up. They they heard me, yeah. like, vocally, yeah. spiritually. They saw me grow up. So they always told me, you sound so much like Lauren Daigle. Like, I can close my eyes, and you just sound like Lauren Daigle. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I was like, that's not that's a compliment. So thank yeah, you. I will take it. Yeah. <laughs> <I'll> take it. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, speaking of Lauren Daigle, so when I when we were social media stalking you earlier, Kimmy, we saw that you've you've gotten to make some videos, right? Oh, and yes. do some producing and recording. So yes. you like oh, talk about how that happened, talk about the experience, all that. Wow. Well, also that was kind of a God thing. Yeah, well, tell the story. Of, totally. So, um, so in Michigan, along with my uh, my mom's brothers so my uncles they're all musically inclined they have the ones that live in michigan they have this thing this band called big brother band right okay and they you know do these gigs i don't know if you know if if you've been to michigan but it's totally laid back and they just have these gigs on saturdays they go to the lake and then they have these gigs it's just awesome so yeah all donation purposes yeah it's just all that's cool okay Mm -hmm. so Growing up, we almost every summer we went to Michigan. So my uncle pushed me a lot. He's part of the my. He's in my music history for sure. Yeah, he uh, pushed me to sing um, a lot and in right. a good way. So he he has totally been a light in my life. And so cool. uh, one summer, which was wait, what last summer? Yeah, twenty nineteen. No, it wasn't during COVID. Yes, it was during COVID. I remember because we traveled. So last summer, he was like, hey, um, I have this friend. And he said, I showed him a couple of videos of you singing. And he he said he wants me, he wants to record you. So I was like, oh, okay. Like, okay, cool, cool. So, and we were at home and hello, Michigan is totally far. That's a really (laughs) far away from the tippy toe of Texas. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, and we, I, this was actually coming to Liberty was my, that was my first like plane okay. ride. So we drive everywhere. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we drove to Michigan with that. And yeah, it was how the many summer. hours is it from Texas to Michigan? Like, well, we can make 32? a lot of p- 30 pit stops. Ooh. So like 32 hours, 32 probably. hours. Okay. We take a lot of pit stops. So it takes like three days, honestly, two well, days to get there. It's two days at least. Makes it fun. <laughs> See some things along the way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So honestly, I kind of get, I've gotten tired of the car rides because <laughs> can we take a plane, please? Yes, exactly. <laughs> now that it's only like five hours, she's like, let's just do this every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that summer I, uh, I went and and we went that weekend and we went to um, the producer okay. and he said, pick, he said, out of 
just bring three songs and then I'll help you pick. And I was like, okay, good. Because I, I mean, I don't really, I don't really know anything about recording. Yeah. I don't know what songs are best to pick or anything like that. Yeah. So, um, so I went with three songs and two of them were You Say and Hallelujah. Okay. So I'm curious. What was the third one, Kimmy? I feel like it was, what was the other? X's and O's. Okay. (laughs) That's great. Yes. So, um, so I went and then they recorded me and they were like, whoa, like your voice is crazy. And so X's and O's I had left out okay. and um, originally, and then they had said that they have this profit organization where you record the songs and then whatever money I make off of the song, I give it to um, uh, the, the disability. The, the disability. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And this, the disabled kids who like to play music or want guitars or, or yeah. So, so that profit organization, that last song went to, um, and I was only supposed to record one song wow. originally. And he had said, you know what, just do both. And I was like, okay. Well, no, it was, I think $600 per song. And it was $600 okay. per song. So yeah. We, you know, yeah, we yeah, like, oh, it adds, what it adds like, good yeah. enough. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so so six hundred dollars. C- keeping that in mind, we we're like, yeah. yeah, like I think we'll just do you say so by Lauren Daigle. Yeah. So so we did that, and then and then what had happened? Well, uh, he we were like, you know what? I don't think we can do this because like yes. it was too much financially, and we were like, okay, you know what? Let's hold off. Maybe next time. And they're like, no, no, like we'll bring it down to three hundred. Mm-hmm. And we're like. Okay, like that's reasonable, you know, yeah. like we'll yeah. we'll go in. So we get there and I believe me and my uncle were like talking about my aunt Tammy, which passed away my senior year. Um that was really hard on us, but um he heard us talking saying like, Man, I wish Tammy was here, like, but we know she's watching like from heaven. Like and what we you know, said we was know Tammy would be so so proud. proud. Yeah. Aww. And so Fast forward, like Kimberly's done recording. We're, gonna, we're about to hand them like our the money okay. and finish, and we're gonna pay and say thank you and give our regards and stuff. And then um, the producer Nick, he said, he he just said, you know what, man, this is on us, and this is from Tammy. What? That's yeah. crazy. So he said, this is from Tammy and this is on us. So don't even worry about paying it. Oh my goodness. So, what a blessing. Yeah. And, and we ended up recording all, all three, three songs. All three songs. <laughs> yeah. So which would have been worth, you're the math wizard, of course. So which would have been worth what? 120, right? No. No. One, $600. Six, $1,800. $1,800. Yeah. 1800 <laughs> That's crazy. I knew that number. Yeah. I'm not a math wizard. So that was just really, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it was just totally a God thing. And of course, we prayed so much about going going yeah. in and coming out. We just gave uh, so much thanks to the Lord and, and yeah. just it was all for His glory. So yeah, we we're super excited and happy about that. That's amazing. So it was like, I mean, so you also did video with it. Did they do all that or was the video later? Or? So what they did was they had recorded my voice first mm-hmm. and then, and I had never been a part, a part of that process. So it was like super cool. Yeah. And so they recorded my voice first and then after they... They, it was kind of like doing karaoke, but to my own voice recording. Okay. So yeah. then they recorded video. Yeah. Or, so yeah. You they recorded audio them. and then video. Yeah. Okay. That's a pretty normal. So they have it down yeah. and then you go in and they're mm-hmm. just video recording you singing to yourself in the studio. Look, <laughs> so we can link these, right? We found them on, are there other, they're on YouTube, mm-hmm. yes. right? Are there other, is that where to find them the best place? Yes. Okay. So we'll link them. We have show notes and we'll. Will, we'll put them all in there. And we <laughs> to be, you need to go listen to them. Everybody listening, she does an incredible job. I love it. I'm a big fan. When you started singing Hallelujah, I was like, okay, that's my girl, Kenny. I'm like, I like her. <laughs> Good pick. Yeah. Solid pick right there. And my voice, actually, it's crazy because even like a month or two later, like I sang the same songs and I was like, whoa, why? why? I look back at the songs and I'm like, ooh. Like, you yeah. sound like a baby, though. That's I sound funny. like a baby for some reason. I'm uh-huh. like, whoa, can I record, so re-record you, those? A bit, were you 16 when you're recording them? Probably, Probably 15. 15. Okay, yeah, your Two voice will change. Yeah, change quite a bit. But it, I mean, it sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's yeah. so fun. So, what was the biggest kind of takeaway from being in a recording studio, having that? What 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 would be your biggest takeaway from that whole experience? Well, it was just such an awesome experience, especially recording, um, like you say, that like glorifies God yeah. with his with its lyrics. Yeah. So I just like I was like, whoa, like this is so awesome. Like 
This this must like this is how like Laura Diggle feels and Crowder and oh Crowder's another I love Crowder so oh, much. Oh man, yes. Bill Wickham, amazing. Okay, yes. <laughs> throw those on the list. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so it was just such a great feeling, and it was just overwhelming in a great way. And yeah. I was like, whoa, I can get used to this. Huh? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Kimmy, you definitely have such a joy um, about you. So obviously we know probably partly that's the Lord, but just talk a little bit about that. Like where do you just, are you naturally happy? Do you have bad days? Like, <laughs> oh no. If you see, like I always tell everyone, she literally talks 24 seven. Believe me. No, I'm, I'm not even kidding. She sings in the shower. She'll talk in her sleep. The first thing she does when she gets up is talk and she's never nonstop talking. We're like, oh my. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Two nights ago, she's like, Kim, Kimberly. In my sleep. In my sleep. A R Y. I was like, <laughs> I look, she was sleep. asleep. No, but I look like an Uber driver. And then she's like, I totally look like an Uber. <laughs> in your sleep. You're in her sleep. She's saying all Can we just cut this out? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're keeping it in, Kimmy. This is gold. She does. No, she yeah, talks I'm, in her sleep. A, oh, you're my future that's roommate. Amazing. Just to beware, I do talk in my sleep. <laughs> It's not, it's not so bad that I don't walk in my sleep and like get a knife or anything like that. So you're good. That's good. That's good. Well, you'd be in good company with the singing because Lillian, there's pretty much nonstop singing that goes on all okay, the time. So you just start singing duets. Maybe you'll duet in your sleep together. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, and every person just, I'm, I'm normal. I do have some bad days, you yeah. know, but I, I do have the Lord in my heart. I, I have gotten... I mean, as I've grown up, maybe more middle school, high school, um, people just come up to me and they're like, why are you so happy? Like, yeah. like yeah. how? And I'm just like, like, oh, Jesus, like I have the Lord in my heart. Like, yeah. like that is just the one like true way to just be happy and yeah. pe- and being bring peace um, in life. And I know he's the, the way and the truth in the life. And it's just the one way, to, the only way to be happy. And I, 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 I do have bad days. I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just they're not as bad when you have Jesus in your life. So that's awesome. Yeah. So what would you say, Kimmy, just to there's a lot of young girls that are going to be listening. There's a lot of older people, all <laughs> kinds of ages that listen to our podcast. Um, if someone's struggling today, just maybe it's one of those days it's a little harder and the joy seems a little harder to come by. What would you say to just give them some encouragement to to just keep going? Yeah, um, don't look at the temporary things. Just, uh, just try to keep be fixated on on the outcome, mm. and and Jesus saves, and so he he always will bring will bring joy. Joy comes in the morning, as Scripture says. So yeah, I just think that that is the one way to be happy. And I know bad days do come, yeah. but um, yeah, joy comes in the morning. So. I love it. That's good to me. Uh, so let's talk about this. So we met. We're here at Liberty, <laughs> seeing the campus. You're getting ready to make some pretty big life changes. How are you feeling about all this? Give us the <laughs> 411 on being a senior and graduating and then going off really far away to yeah, school. Yeah, well, um, I am super nervous. <laughs> super nervous. I'm nervous and excited, but really nervous. Yeah, yeah. Um, coming up, so 23 hours away from home, I'm super, super uh, dependent on my family. I'm yeah. not one of those independent, confident people at all. <laughs> um, but I am confident in the Lord. And so wherever he sends me, I know that I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just nervous, but I, I, and one thing I have been praying about, um, is graduating in December. Yeah. So I do think that's a really like a tough decision to make. Yeah. Um, I really am, uh, I have my eyes fixed on Liberty and I do think that God has made it really clear uh, for me to go to Liberty. So that is where I'm I'm going to be attending. Okay. Um, but the where, I mean, the when is the, the question. Yeah. So um, going in January, I've had all these thoughts, you know, like, how am I going to make friends or how am I going to get like a roommate just in January? Like that's so random, you know? Yeah. And then I know my sister and my mom would be like, no, it's not that random. It's like the beginning of a semester, you know, yeah. people don't usually know you're going to be seven because I'm going to be 17 when I go. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So they're, they're not going to know you're 17. They're not going to know yeah. you're a, a freshman. And so all you that. Seem like you have an old soul a little bit to you. Like <laughs> I would have not guessed you were 17. So that's, that's good. <laughs> but thank you. Actually, at home, everyone's like, you look like a third or fourth grader. And I'm like, no. <laughs> she's older than you. 
Yeah, but then <laughs> it's so it's fifty fifty because sometimes people think I'm like twelve or thirteen, and then some people think I'm older than her, which Kennedy's twenty two. So <laughs> it's yeah, you should never know, right? You never but, know. <laughs> I love it. So Liberty, come in for worship. That's mm-hmm. going to be amazing. Kimmy, I know you're going to do great. What other... Okay, so like today, if you could just pull back, you could... God would just tell you, here's the plan, and he would give you like the complete desire of your heart exactly how you want it. What would be the the end goal, job situation, life placement, all that? What would that look like? Well, um, worship just being like one of my priorities for glorifying God, and it has been such a passion of mine. Um, I just think that that is one way that I I would really, like it's a desire in my heart to just glorify God in that way. Yeah. Um, But what has always been my prayer is whatever occupation I am going to go into, whether it's in the medical field, teaching, science, anything, um, I just want my life to glorify God. And, and yeah, so Kimberly and yeah, go ahead, Rachel. The, the love for older for the, Oh yeah. I, yeah. I love older people at my okay. church. We call them classics. <laughs> that's a great way to explain it. Classic. It doesn't sound, that's great. Me I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I love classics. I have a huge place in my heart for classics. So at, at home, uh, at church, we start, or I started this, uh, or, Yeah, in seventh grade, we started this um, ministry called Love Thy Neighbor. Okay. And it was when we went to the local nursing home. And this was before COVID. So we went to the local nursing home and then we went each month and we celebrated whoever's month, like whoever's birthday was that month we celebrated. So yeah, so we, and I brought some of of the team members from my worship team and we sang and then uh, we got them some cake. And so we, and also on like holidays, we uh, got them like for Christmas, we got them like fuzzy socks and like blankets and all that. So it was a complete joy uh, that was brought to my heart going over there. I just, I just totally have this click with older people. And I, my sister's the total opposite. So she loves kids and like okay. babies and all yeah. that. And don't, she doesn't really click with older people. I'm the total opposite. I do not really have that much patience for children. And <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's weird. I, I'm sorry. I just don't. And yeah. I love, I just totally click with the older people. So I love it. I love that you're calling it classics. classics. I think that's great. Mm-hmm. All of our older friends will probably appreciate that listening, <laughs> but I'm sure that brought them so much joy just to have people come in and invest in them and sing for them and just pamper them because it's often a generation of people that sometimes can be forgotten mm-hmm. and exactly. sometimes not have family to come visit and Mm -hmm. be a part so yeah and we would also share you know god's word and we would just uh give them a small devotional so yeah i love it Mm -hmm. well kimmy i want to go back and ask you so you mentioned when you were in the theater department at school and everything that you had some interesting situations with people who would say stuff about your faith or Mm -hmm. whatever how how did you handle that kimmy like tell us a little more about what that was and how did you handle that with grace (laughs) did you handle with grace i guess yeah well (laughs) let me tell you i didn't have a smile then yeah right now I, i always I am always smiling all the time. Sometimes my jaw hurts because I <laughs> smile all the time. But um, yeah, it's like then Bunny the elf doesn't say smiling. <laughs> Smiling's my favorite. Yeah, exactly. exactly her. I should put that in my bio. That's or something. <laughs> so um, yeah, so it just honestly was really hard to hear. I, like face to face, it wasn't even over text or anything. Just face to face, I was just yeah. like kind of in disbelief of how harsh people can be to people who have a uh, faith. Um, or a strong relationship or any relationship with Christ. Yeah. Um, I just was, yeah, in shock and disbelief. I, I was sad, um, but I do know that, and I did know then, and I do know now that God um, had a plan. Yeah. Whether I, I could have stood um, stood there firm in my faith and well-grounded and um, just kind of gone past it. And so, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I think if it wasn't for her going through those trials, she probably wouldn't be at liberty today mm-hmm. because for a long time she was set on, I want to do musical theater in college. I want to go on Broadway. I want to do this like with musical theater. It was never really worship until everything happened that he was like, psych, you're not doing yeah. that. You're going to, yeah. you're going to be leading worship for me. That's what I want you to do. And yeah. liberty just so happened to like pop up on her Instagram yeah. page, I think one day. And like, she was like, guys, I'm going here. And it just kind of like, it was like, like God yelling, like, Hey, this is your new home. Like you have to come here. And ever since then, like, it's just Liberty has just been like 
like this God is, calling like, her to come here. It was yeah. like, so hard not to say, Kimberly, you can't come here. Like mm. it's just God calling her here. This is her new home. Yeah. Kimberly, that's amazing. You want to talk a little more about that whole experience of just kind of switching, thinking, hey, this is what I want to do. And then God kind of going, eh, yeah. So it was definitely not a one day to the next type of switch that occupation type of thing. I know yeah. that. Yeah. I totally wanted to go. I wanted to go to NYU. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. wanted to pursue um, theater, musical theater specifically. And uh, I actually was going to go to like these summer camps, like literally like that summer that I was kind of looking at, like that Liberty popped up onto my feed. I was fixing to go to New York to a summer camp for theater. Okay. And, and I'm totally not saying like theater, you shouldn't do theater. Yeah, guys, absolutely. But, right. But it just wasn't for me. Absolutely. God just had yeah. kind of closed that door for me personally. Yeah. And so, so yeah, I, that summer, um, well, co- we didn't go to Amda or what, yeah, whatever yeah. the organization was called, um, mm-hmm. because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like yeah. okay. COVID, I think like maybe we were supposed to go in May or June and mm-hmm. everything shut down in March. So we were like waiting and waiting. And then we were just like, okay, that this isn't mm-hmm. what God wants you to do. So yeah. we accepted that. And now we're here. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> exactly. Great. Well, and sometimes the best thing you can do is when you are praying and you're asking for God's will to be done, mm-hmm. sometimes it does happen best by closed doors and closed situations. And it opens something else up and you're like, okay, this is what I thought I was going to do. And like you said, like, I'm sure God could totally bless you doing theater stuff and you could do that. And I'm sure he's going to give you a lot of opportunities and for everybody's story looks different. And everybody's mm-hmm. journey is different. Um, but this is what God is needing to do for you right now, Kimmy. And that's, <laughs> that's awesome. For it sure. sounds like you're being obedient and going to step into that. And I know there's going to be a lot of blessing for sure. We're doing that. Okay. Kimmy. So it sounds like we've talked a little bit that you guys like to travel a lot. So just what's some of the, tell us about your family traveling. How does that happen? How do you guys pick where to go? All the things. Well, I'm honestly the, I'm the child, the youngest child. So I'm just like, Hey, I'm here for the ride. Tell me how much to pack. And I'm there. Tell me the time and (laughs) day. You don't listen to the travel. I I mean, the packing restrictions. She packs her entire closet. (laughs) You don't listen to the packing (laughs) restrictions. That's great. (laughs) You're right. So so yeah, tell me the time and place I'm supposed to be at the car and then I'll be there. So (laughs) yeah. So I, I love traveling. My, my mom mainly is kind of the ones who, my mom and my sister are the ones, my dad just listens and my brother's also the time. My dad for just around for the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have been to 39 states. Oh my goodness. So far. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. So we've been to 39 states and I had never been on a plane until now when I came to Virginia. <laughs> I've literally driven all those places. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. We've been to, where, where have we been to again? I forget sometimes. We do it because we want to. We're, we're doing this because we're. In our with our family, we have yeah. a bucket family list or a bucket list, right, for the family. Yeah, and so we want to um, attend every national baseball field in America. Okay, mm-hmm. I love this, Rachel. I'm going to need you to just interject here for a minute because you said a lot of great things already. <laughs> so tell me, where does the love for baseball? come from because i'm assuming somebody has to love baseball because you're not just choosing to do this for no reason (laughs) yes yes well um my father-in-law he he played baseball his entire life and in college too and um bless his heart he's uh has colon cancer right now okay and we don't know how long Mm. Yeah. yeah so um So it it stems from there. Yeah, yeah. And my my son and my my husband. So mm-hmm. we all became a, a baseball, baseball family. family. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So we've been and St. Louis is actually one of our favorites. <laughs> That's how yes. we bonded partly today too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We're from St. Louis. We're like, well, we've been to Bush Stadium. I was like, wait, yes. say, what? What? Yes. It's, it's amazing. amazing. Everyone yeah. loves baseball there. I, yeah. No matter. Oh yeah. Yes. We're big baseball fanatics in the St. Louis area. You're either a yes. Cardinals fan or you you just are. You have no <laughs> choice but to be a Cardinals fan. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. So that that's definitely top notch. Yeah, in our, on our list. Mm-hmm. So we're looking forward to doing. I guess we've done almost half. Okay, <laughs> that's amazing. About thirteen or fourteen. I think thirteen or fourteen. Thirteen. Uh, thirteen mm-hmm. stadiums. Okay. Stadiums. So what outside of Bush Stadium? What's one of the other ones that sticks out as a favorite? Favorite. I like PNC Park. Okay. In, in, Which is in Pittsburgh. 
Evan well, Pittsburgh. Well, not, I'm glad you said that, Kimmy, because you're talking to the wrong girl about all the sports <laughs> stuff. Unless I wouldn't be able to tell you what it was. So. No, trust me, I am not sports savvy. I do yeah. not know any history or anything like that. But she doesn't like Park to sweat. Pitt- yeah, I don't. I don't like to sweat. I had AC. If there's Kimmy, AC, we call it you know. sparkling. Exactly. You just sparkle a little exactly. bit, but yes. you want to keep that under control. Love it. Love uh-huh. it. Yeah. No. I am. If there's AC next door, well, then I'm gonna be next door. So you find me there. <laughs> I'm, I'm with Definitely. you on that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yes. um, I thought that PNC Park stood out to me because of the just the community. I think the also the the surrounding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the bridges. That's cool. Okay, why don't you get Rachel? Yes. What was one of your favorites, and then Kennedy will let you share one. Um, Texas Rangers was one of my favorites. Okay, and now they have a new stadium, so I don't know if. But I I look for community. I look for interaction. I look yeah. for you know for you to be in like everyone in together with the spirit, you know, the spirit yeah. of baseball. Yeah. It doesn't that, matter what your beliefs, it, morals, values, or race is. It's just, we all love baseball. So yeah. that's so the, the, the love of the game. Yes. And yeah. so, um, that's definitely, and New York, uh, the Yankees was yeah. also one of my favorites. Okay. Boston. <laughs> Sorry. Boston. No, I love okay. Fenway Park. Fenway. Too. Fenway. That's Fenway. Amazing. amazing. I love that you guys have yes. seen all these. This is so cool. <laughs> Yes, I don't okay. like the traffic, but yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Most of those places will leave the traffic. Kennedy, what about you? Since you said Fenway, I guess I have to go with the Astros because they're my favorite baseball team. So okay. I gotta support them. Okay, um, but no, Minute Maid has a like just that like well the times the recent time that we went was when they were in the playoffs. So just the adrenaline, like it was so crazy, and like everybody just rooting for them was like ah. I love it. Uh, the love energy it. there was just so exciting. So, well, yeah. uh, my favorite there at the Astros, what it, Minute Maid Park, is the Torchies tacos. So good. I've, okay. That's See, now we're getting something. to the real good stuff. Here. All this has been good here for sure, but the stadium, and then you got to talk about stadium food. Yeah, so I have some more questions. So, when you go, do you guys like, do you buy, do you dress like the team that you're going to see? No, or do no, you no, dr- no. like just. We dress in Astro attire every yeah. stadium we go to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys are Astros fans yes, across the board. Okay, are. and so then you, <laughs> I love it. So you just show up in your Astros stuff. Even so, what do people? You had to have gotten some good reactions. Well, I feel like it's funny because well, Cleveland. We actually really liked Progressive Field, which is where the Cleveland Indians play. Okay, and I think we went to their away game. The Astros just so happened to be playing there that one one day that we were passing by. And like they were like, "Hey, see you in postseason." Like it's just like they give us like like uh, like what? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Good competition. Good competition. Yeah. There you I go. love friendly it. Com- friendly competition, yeah. and yeah. we just go back and forth, and it's, it's fun. Like it's all loving, and it's no no hatred or anything. We're just like ha- the love for baseball is there. Yeah. That's all that matters. So yeah, it's fun. <laughs> That's really cool. Okay, so I feel like we're gonna need to. We'll have to get a picture or something of you guys, your family. <laughs> in the Astros gear at one of the other stadiums. I feel like we're going to need... Well, when we go visit y'all in St. Louis or... <laughs> yeah, you're definitely going to have to come <laughs> back to Bush go. Stadium. Yeah. Well, I love it. So, Rachel, you were telling us, what's your favorite barbecue in St. Louis? Well, <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, when we went this past uh, summer, it was... Uh, we went to... Or two summers ago, we uh, ate at Sugar, Sugar Fire. Sugar Fire, yes. Sugar Fire. Yep. <sighs> Oh my goodness, best, best ribs ever. ever. I love that. We got to get sponsored by Sugar Fire. Actually, our neighbor works <laughs> yes. there, and so I feel like we need to let our shout out to our yes. neighbor. Yes, and we're from Texas, and every anyone that goes to St. Louis, we're like, go to Sugar Fire, go to Sugar Fire. I love, you I have mean, to I, go. That's pretty high praise from a Texan to say, <laughs> yes. go to Sugar Fire. Yeah, I mean, from a Texan. Because Texas barbecue, Texas barbecue, barbecue Texas is like barbecue. just I, Texas barbecue. Yes, like, yeah. Everything's better than Texas, sorry. Well, <laughs> but except I, Sugar Fire. Except Sugar <laughs> Fire. Right. Well, I feel yeah. like we're going to talk about this because I, we've been to Texas, but it's been a while. We're going to have to come visit you guys down in the, oh, the yeah. tippy toe of Texas. <laughs> but tell us just, I mean... Tell us a couple Texas things that we just need. Well, need tell, to me know. Lo- tell me, you, you're from Texas without telling me you're from Texas. Like, <laughs> shoes, my shoes. Shoes are the Texas, Texas shoes on. <laughs> I, mean, I love it. <laughs> Which I also happen to be Liberty Colors and, you know, America. It so matches. Like, it it's matches. Across the board. <laughs> Very patriotic over here. <laughs> Um, I know one thing that I love about Texas is just everyone comes together for the the love that they have for Texas. I love Texas so much. I'm yeah. so sad Texas that forever. I'm leaving like soon, but 
I, I, I know, I know that God has called me here for a reason, which yeah. I'm so excited and happy for whatever he has planned for me. Yeah. Um, but I love Texas so much. It's great. Well, I know like once a Texan, always a Texan. Exactly. Right? I mean, like you mm-hmm. might be able to take the girl at Texas, but you can't take the Texas other girl. Right? Exactly. So you still be, no, you'll, they're always saying like, why don't you move to Virginia with Kimmy? I'm like, nope, never leaving Texas. Sorry. Like She's stuck I can't, on Texas that. forever. She I can't. Is. No, I'm it. not leaving Texas. Have you grown up like where you guys live? Has that been where your family has been from for a while in that area? Yes. Okay. We, we got married 30 years ago. 30 years ago, or 1990, we got married. Okay, congratulations. So That's exciting. We They've all been born in Edinburgh, so okay. we just live there. Mm-hmm. I love it. Well, Rachel, give us just the real quick while we're just all over the place. How did you meet your <laughs> husband? Like, how did you guys get connected? So I moved to College Station, which is where he's from. Okay. Texas A&M is there. Yes. So that's where, uh, that's where I met him. And, um, and then about a couple of years later... I moved back home because I wanted to be with my mom. Okay. And so uh, he moved with me. We got married. I love it. <laughs> we go College Station. We have some good friends Ooh, that are all from cool. Texas Giggle fans. Maggie's. And so we, yeah. Giggle. They're going to be excited. Giggle. Shout out to Josh and Katie listening Ooh. right now. They'll be excited. <laughs> we found even yeah. more friends. <laughs> yes. I College Station is awesome. That's Howdy. Very cool. Well, Kimmy, anything, I mean, we've just been all over the place. Is there, and the time goes so fast as I said it would. Is there anything else we haven't talked about that you want to talk about? Any more interesting story? I mean, I'm sure you could tell us all kinds of stories. <laughs> Anything come to mind that you want to share with us and our listeners? I, I really, um, I think that even though that Kimberly's been through a lot, yeah, I mean, she really has. Uh, I would always tell Kennedy, like, she's 14, 15, 16 years old. Mm. And, you know, all these people are literally canceling her, oh. you know, just because of her conservative views. Mm-hmm. And so um, she went from having uh, all these friends in theater, having all these friends because she went in not knowing anybody, knowing zero people. When, she, I, when I moved districts okay. for high school, yeah, yeah, for yeah. high school, she moved because she loved theater. Yeah. But she moved with a blindfold. I mean, she knew no one, Mm -hmm. but because she loved theater so much and that theater department was the place to be. Yeah. So she met all of these people and then come two years later, you know, when the, during election time, I Kimberly doesn't even vote. Yeah. I don't know why it was with all these conservative and she would only post like Bible verses. So I, yeah. So I wouldn't really post anything political at all. Never. Yeah. And um, even though I could, because it's my social media, you know. Right, right. Um, you can post what you want on your own platform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I, I would just post, you know, um, Bible studies or some devotionals. I would just yeah. like to share share God's word yeah. uh, through the platform that I have and that God has given me. I feel like that is something really important nowadays, especially teenagers. I know we're really big on social media. Yeah. Um, I just would post that sort of stuff. And I would never... I would never like say it out loud or like of what presidential um, party candidate for. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't really matter, but people would make assumptions. Yeah, exactly. So it was all assumptions that they had made. Mm -hmm. um, And they totally just canceled me. They unfollowed me, blocked me, talked about about me behind my back. And they said all these like mean and untrue stuff just because Mm -hmm. I had posted, uh, I mean, conservative and biblical yeah. truth right. on my and, story. Right. And the thing was that one person led to another, to another, to another. So it was kind of like a trend yeah. to cancel Kimberly. Okay. So I, I always felt bad, you know, and I, 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 but Kimberly just like, she just kept going. Uh-huh. Like, I, I, and I feel like, I mean, God was always with her and she felt it. She felt the presence. And so them opening the doors at church with ha- her having be a, be a leader, mm-hmm. she had a place of belonging. So she didn't need to be long over here yeah. because she belonged to Jesus yep. and she knew it. Yeah. You know, so because of that, uh, I mean, because of Jesus, like she's, she's here today, yeah. you know, because, you know, people are mean. Mm-hmm. And, and so, it, it could have gone like, yeah. you know, she could have been depressed and all, but, yeah. but Jesus brought her along. So, 
I, I really, and, and the church, like I told Kimberly Kennedy, she had Kennedy in my eyes had more leadership skills. Uh-huh. Kennedy did than Kimberly. I never, ever saw Kimberly <laughs> being a leader. <laughs> Ever. Thanks, Mama. <laughs> hey, but, well, you know. where's the butt in this? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because, I mean, from seventh grade when she started her, before she started her worship team in it the, with the youth, she started that uh, ministry and uh, with the classics, Love Thy Neighbor. Yeah. And so she did that, and then she did the youth worship then they called her to do uh sunday, morning. sunday mornings to worship okay. for the entire okay. church and so now she's the leader for the uh, all the adults yeah. in the band yeah and so all of these leadership positions that god has yet yeah. definitely clearly placed in her life yes. like intentionally yep you know so all this time she's okay if they unfollowed her. Mm -hmm. She's okay if she's not going with the world. Yeah. You know, she's okay with it. Yeah. So that's why coming to Liberty, even though she's going to be so far away, like everyone is in the same mindset, same mentality. Everyone's for Jesus, champions for Christ. Yes. Practicing daily, you know. Yeah. And so I love that about Liberty. Yeah. And so I, we experienced it last time and this time. That's amazing. And so uh, I, I know that she'll be fine. Yeah, absolutely. Even if she's not going to be with us. Yeah. So shameless plug for Liberty University. If you want to sponsor her now, that's something that we'll let you. No, 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 that's great because here's the deal. Um, and we, we talk about it often behind the scenes. God is the one who raises people up and down Mm -hmm. and platforms so much in our culture. It can look like, well, you need to have X amount of Instagram followers or Mm -hmm. this many people. And it's based on the platform. And of course there's times and places for that, but God doesn't really care about those things. Mm -hmm. He cares about the heart. Mm -hmm. And he is looking for people who are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. And he can raise anybody up and pull anybody down that he Mm -hmm. wants to. And he's looking for humble hearts of people that are going to follow him and serve him. Um, And that doesn't matter of political views or any other stances. It's just looking for people who who love Jesus. And that can happen all across the board and all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, Kimmy, those are really cool lessons that you've gotten to learn. (laughs) It'll carry you really far because your mom and Will and I that are a few (laughs) years, that are edging closer to the classic category, even though we're going to say we're really far away from it. Uh, We are very far away from it right, Rachel? We're not that close, but <laughs> but we can tell you how much that's just going to serve you in the earlier you learn that in your life, how that's just going to benefit you to go, hey, a lot of things, there's going to be seasons of stuff, good, bad, things are going to come and go. For sure. Yep. But our relationship with the Lord is one of the most important things, and that's what's going to keep you grounded and keep keep you going. So, Amen. For I sure. love it. I love it. Well, Kimmy, the very last thing we ask everybody on our show <laughs> is because it's called Now That's Something Good, you've already shared with us a lot of good things. <laughs> Do you have one more good thing you'd like to share with us? And I always tell people, like, it can be anything. There's no qualifier. It can be, like, literally, it doesn't matter. <laughs> anything. Hmm. There's a <laughs> lot of good things. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm, 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 hmm. <laughs> I think I think one thing that that, uh, <laughs> that um, is is good all the time, you know, for those that are uh, need encouragement and stuff. Yeah. Just uh, when I feel discouraged, you know, just being thankful for what I do have. Yes. And and so great, the grateful. Cup half full instead yes. of empty. Yes. Yes. Really that, good. That that helps a lot. Yeah. Just thanking God for just. I'm here, I'm 51 years old and I'm here and I'm alive and I'm, you know, so, and I have a family, you know, so. Yeah. That is gratitude is always a great way to pave the way for a lot of things. It helps our whole outlook. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Kennedy, do you want to answer too? I just, I just let all of you answer really. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. No, I was just saying that Meeting Lily, like, <laughs> seriously, like, meeting you guys was good. You can Steeler. say it too. You can say it too. That, <laughs> um, it was like a God sighting. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to go back home and be like, guys, you'll never believe yeah. <laughs> like what happened back in Virginia. Yeah. Like, I love it. It's a blessing it. to meet you guys. And I, I really do feel like this is just the beginning of our relationship with y'all. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Kimmy, you can say whatever. You you totally stole that. (laughs) Thanks a lot, (laughs) Kimmy. (laughs) But no, but yeah, I was just going to say, just meeting y'all was such a blessing. And for sure, it was no coincidence. God knew that we were going to be in that exact same park. Yes. At the same time. Like, that was so weird. Yeah. I was telling my mom, I was just telling her that Lynchburg is kind of actually like big. Like, I didn't expect it to be that big. And we were trying to like just create around finding something to do on a yeah. Saturday morning yep. you know and then we found that park and we're like okay and I I totally I was then you ask me when are you not happy I was like I am in this sweatshirt I am wearing <laughs> jeans heavy jeans I was like oh my gosh are you sure it was you guys a little want hot outside walk? yeah I was like are you sure you guys want to do this trail where people are dressed in like biking outfits and and you know like outside like outfits and I was like yeah. guys like come on now so so we ended up doing it and then we walk out and sure enough we see there we, we are. <laughs> that was so good. that was that good is, <laughs> I love it I love it well we're really grateful to have met you guys and cannot wait to see what God continues to do in all of your lives you definitely have new fans with us and now you have a whole new uh now that's something good family to follow along to <laughs> for so sure, for sure, well, well thank you guys for coming and being with us today no thank you for having us i totally enjoyed this i was let me tell you i was really nervous i was on on the way i was like guys like what am i supposed to say like and and she's like dude just talk like your normal self i was like you're right i'm a talker i love talking i'm super social you did great well we'll have to tell people kimmy is we should have said this on the beginning people often tell me you know like on i don't know if you listen to the podcast a lot but you can um speed them up or slow down and we always joke like we will listen to podcasts a little faster, except for they cannot listen when I'm talking. And I feel like the same thing would be true of you. The two of us could not. <laughs> we're already naturally at one and a half speed. Do not speed this one up. You probably yeah. need to slow it down. <laughs> Just a heads I up. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. We're so grateful for the crazy connection that God made between us and the Naro family. And we're just so honored that they would come and spend a little time of their Lynchburg time here sharing with us their story. So we're going to share some more pictures. Make sure to check out the show notes and hear um, and find some more of the resources and things we talked about there. And as always, it means a lot to us. If you would take a moment to rate and review and share our podcast, it just helps our little corner of the something good world get shared with other people and helps it show up in their feed so that together we can share good news. We really appreciate when you take just a few moments to do that. And one of the biggest things you can do is maybe this episode was an encouragement to you. Take a moment to go share it directly um, with a friend or someone that you're like, hey, you need a little something good in your life. Listen to this. I think it's going to encourage you and it makes a big deal and big difference to us. We hope you have a great week and that you'll be able to go out and find something good and share a little something good with someone around you. See you next time.